Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. My brother owns a small business where he rents a real racing car remodeled as a simulator to events. Interested drivers can enter the car and drive it like real. To do so, he connected it to an Xbox and a Beamer. The problem we had to solve was how to connect a normal racing car to a Xbox. This will be the topic of this and the next episode. To steer a racing car, you need at least a signal for the accelerator, a signal for the direction and a signal for the brake. In this order, as my brother told me. Real racing cars have much more bells and whistles, but because the drivers at the events are not experienced drivers of such cars or gamers, we use a highly automated mode of the Xbox game. This is especially important because a lot of spectators are watching the performance of the colleagues. Like that, everybody has a chance to make a good impression, not only the few professionals. As a first thing, the front wheels of the car have to be lifted a bit. Like that, it's easy to move the steering wheel. Next, we have to find the possibility to catch the directional signal and the position of the accelerator and the brake pedals. These three movements then somehow have to be transferred into the Xbox. Unfortunately, Microsoft decided to make not only money with the box and the games, they also want to make money with the controllers. At least, this is what I assume. Because of this fact, they decided to protect the communication between their controller and the box. This is why we had to buy a certified controller and hack it. We decided to use a controller which was already made for racing games. It has a steering wheel and pedals. The wheel and the pedals are mechanically connected to normal potentiometers and the potentiometers are connected to a board which translates their values and feeds the Xbox. To get the signal from the steering wheel was quite simple. We printed a small gearbox with the right ratio and transferred the potentiometer of the controller into this box. I think this solution is quite elegant and reliable and can easily be removed. We will keep it also for the future. In contrary, the solution for the pedals is not so easy. The current solution was designed by my brother and is very mechanical. It uses an original controller which is connected to the real pedals of the car through steel wires. You can imagine that it is not easy to mount and adjust such a device. And because he wants to use the racer from time to time on the track, he wanted to have a nicer solution. So my attack plan is to replace the whole mechanics with electronics. The pedals have a linear movement to catch and their swing is quite small, especially at the brake pedal. How can we translate the small linear movements into a signal needed by our controller? I divide the task into three parts. First, we have to convert a mechanical movement into an electrical signal. Currently, this is done by potentiometers. Next, we have to process this signal. Maybe we have to amplify or attenuate it. And as a last part, we have to simulate the three pins of the potentiometer of the controller, that the controller does not see any difference. Today, I start with a simulation of a potentiometer. This box has to create the three typical signals of a potentiometer. The input has to come from an Arduino-like board. In the next episode, I will try to find a way to translate the mechanical movement into an electronic signal, which can be fed also into the Arduino. At the end, we will try to connect the three parts. I have some ideas about all parts, but I'm not sure if I will succeed. 
but I take you with me on this journey. To steer a potentiometer through an electronic signal, we could add a small motor to the potentiometer. The easiest way to do this is to use a servo motor. The servo can then be driven by an Arduino. This is quite clumsy and as electronics engineer I do not like this mechanical approach. We need a better solution. How? We could try to simulate the potentiometer with a fully electronical part. A potentiometer has three wires, two at both ends connected by a resistive element and one in the middle with a wiper contact. If you move the wiper, the distance from one end gets bigger and from the other end gets smaller. If we assume that the resistance per distance of the resistive element is the same, we get a variable resistor. Let's now simulate a 4 kilo ohm potentiometer. We use four 1 kilo ohm resistors in series to simulate the resistive element. To test our concept, we connect one test lead of our ohmmeter to one end of the potentiometer and the other to the wiper point. We can now connect the middle wire to each of the points and get 1 kilo, 2 kilo, 3 kilo and finally 4 kilo ohm, just as expected from a potentiometer. We just develop the principle of the electronic potentiometer. If we can connect our middle wire by electronic switches to the respective point, we are able to electronically simulate the potentiometer. And of course, we want it a little more precise. So we just add a few more resistors and get more points to choose. Fortunately, we can buy all these components for a few dollars in a small package. In addition, the developers added an I2C interface to the very same package. And if we choose the AD5242, we even get two potentiometers in the same package. Exactly what we need. Let's try out this marvelous chip. A library to drive these chips exists and so we do not have to deal with the nitty gritty of the registers in the chip. Because the chip is in a tiny TSSOP package, I had to solder it to a breadboard friendly PCB. For the first tests I connect one of the chips with an Arduino Mega and the potentiometer chip with my desk multimeter. This multimeter also has a locking function. To test the electronic potentiometers I use a small sketch which counts from 0 to 255 and transfers this value to the AD5242. Why 0 to 255? because the AD5242 has 256 resistors in series. Here are the measured results of one of the potentiometers in one of my chips. First, we immediately see that the potentiometer does not have 10 kilo ohm as written on the chip. It has only 8.4 kilo ohms. This is not what I expected. Checking the data sheet, it says that plus minus 30% are allowed. So our chip is well in spec. If you need an exact value, this is for sure not your chip. I hope that it anyway will work with my controller. The device is not completely linear. It has 16 areas of non-linearity. But this should also be okay for our goal. Checking other chips, also of different batches, shows similar results. At least the two potentiometers on the same chip match more or less. Now we can replace the normal potentiometers by the electronic ones and hope it will work. For this test I connect a real potentiometer to the A0 pin of the Mega, read its value and output it to the digital potentiometer. Let's try our luck and switch everything on. The electronic potentiometer is connected to the accelerator function of the controller. And 
and you see it works. As we saw at the beginning, the signal for direction already now works fine and does not need an overhaul. So we are ready for the next step. How to detect the mechanical movement of the pedals. Stay tuned if you want to know which principle I will use. If you want, you can guess in the comment. Maybe you even have a better idea than myself. Thank you for watching. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!